Hello and welcome to the section of the Chemistry Tutor. In the last section what we did is just introduce the concept of an oxidation number. We said it's a bookkeeping method to track electron transfer in a reaction. We gave a couple of very simple problems just showing you how finding the charge on uh, the items in a compound basically is what we're calling the uh, oxidation number and I was very careful to stress that in some cases it's not going to make a, a line up with what you think the answer should be and that there's a method for finding these oxidation numbers. So what I'm going to do now is start with a clean board and write down the method. It's not very hard but you do need to follow it in priority order. So what I'm going to do is write down all six little rules that you follow for finding the oxidation number. It's very important for you to realize that when you get done with it, there's going to be six rules. It'll be one, two, three, four, five, and six. So when you're finding your oxidation numbers, you're going to start at rule one, and everything at the top of the list is going to overrule any rule underneath it. So the way you go through when you're looking at your, your uh, compounds is you go, when you start from rule one and you march down the list, and everything that you find that applies, you go ahead and do that. So if something is at the top of the list, it takes priority over something that's at the bottom of the list because sometimes you might have conflicting, you might have conflicting ideas about what to do. So this is very easy once you get the hang of it. Okay, so the very first rule, rule number one, is something we've actually talked about before. Uh, and so here we go. There's a part A and a part B. So let's call it uh, 1A. Four atoms in a neutral in a neutral atom molecule etc the total of all oxidation I'm going to do oxid for oxidation numbers is zero all right, I actually mentioned that to you a minute ago when we did sodium chloride. I said, hey, when you add these things up, the oxidation numbers, when you sum them up, is zero. And that's all that this is saying. So as an example, if you have the atom just sitting off by itself, the atom uh, iron, Fe, what it's basically saying is that you know by definition, since it's sitting by itself, the sum of the oxidation numbers of everything in here, which is just one atom, has got to be equal zero. So since you know that the sum of the oxidation numbers have to be zero, then it tells you that if iron is sitting by itself, neutral atom, by itself, the oxidation number of this must be zero. All right. If you have hydrogen gas just sitting off by itself floating in a balloon or something, you know that the sum of the oxidation numbers in this uh, molecule here is zero because it says for atoms in neutral atoms, molecules, etc., any kind of compound, anything, the total of all the oxidation numbers has to be zero. So that means that since the sum of these oxidation numbers uh, are zero, it's basically implying, and since it's the same atom in there, it's basically implying that the oxidation number of this hydrogen is zero. All right, let's look at something like magnesium bromide, MgBr2. What it's saying is the sum of the oxidation numbers in this compound is zero. So if I find the oxidation number of the magnesium, and if I find the oxidation number of the bromine, then once I multiply by the subscripts and add everything together, I'm going to get zero. So all rule 1a says is something that you already really kind of know from what we talked about before. The sum of all the oxidation numbers in a neutral atom or compound always has to be zero. All right, that's all that this is saying. And it's an important rule, and it's the very first rule on the list. Now, 1b is very similar. That's why they wrap it up 